Welcome to Psychic Medium, Tony Green. I am a psychic, a medium, a channel, and today I will be giving uh, answers to people who call in, uh, helping them connect with loved ones on the other side. I will also be doing um, some follow-ups and some predictions. So when a lot of my predictions start happening, I give new predictions. So some of my predictions that have been happening more recently, um, and some of you may or may not know about this, um, but in previous shows, I have predicted that uh, there was going to be some explosions and they have happened and there's going to be some things happening in California um, and the exact term I keep getting for California. And if you're in California, please um, understand that this can mean a number of different things. California is going down. Um, I've gotten more information on that than I'm giving here on the show. But what I will say is that you know, just for so many reasons, if you're in California and you don't agree with what's going on there, get out. There, there are a lot of states in our country. <laughs> I, I, for a moment, I was like, are there like, I think there are like 52 states in our country. Oh, my goodness. When I'm in psychic mode, I don't think um, the way I should. But listen, there are states that may be a better place for you to be. You may be able to find better work, better living situation, better cost of living situation. If you are in a state that um, is requiring things that you do not personally agree with, move to another state. Now, a lot of people will say, I can't. I, I have a house to sell. I have to do this. I have to do that. I get that. Start doing it one step at a time. Make those moves. Do what you need to do for your personal survival, for your family survival, for what you feel is best, okay? The other thing I was getting um, in a lot of my predictions, and this was quite some time ago, um, you'd have to go back and watch previous shows, is that there were going to be a lot of lawsuits starting. Civil suits that would eventually, some of them would remain civil suits. Other ones would turn into um, class action suits. And those are coming in now. I'm seeing them being posted all over the place. If you're in a situation where you are being forced to do something against your will or choice, there are sources out there that are willing to work with you and help you. Also, I don't know if this is factual, but there are a lot of people that are, um, this, this part of it is factual. There are a lot of people reaching out to me, coming in and saying, listen, my work is requiring I do this to keep my job or I'm going to be terminated. If that were me personally, I would stay till the last day and let them terminate me and take steps from there. I can't tell you what to do as an individual. You have to make the choices that are best for you. I can tell you, I've heard a rumor that OSHA stepped in and said, if employers or businesses require this in America, they will be held liable. Check that yourself. I'm not sure if that's a fact or not, but I did hear that. And thank you, OSHA, if you did, for being the only organization willing to stand up for the people. Um, <clears throat> the other thing, there are religious exemptions and medical exemptions that are available. Here's my future predictions. These lawsuits are going to get take over the court systems. They really are. Uh, that is going to be what's going to be very prevalent over the next year and a half, <clears throat> excuse me, is the beginning of these suits. And not only like people saying the pharmaceutical company, you can't sue them. No, you're right. You can't. But if uh, somebody is knowingly putting something harmful into your body, they're liable. Just saying, 
Now, if you agree with getting the shot, then great. That's good for you. But there are a lot of people that don't. And if you're one of the people that are like, hey, listen, I'm not comfortable with this. The, there's not enough science behind it. I see people getting sick. I mean, I've personally seen a lot of damage and people coming into my office or calling me on the phone saying, I've gotten this shot. And it is extremely harmful. Uh, these are my symptoms. I'm going to the hospital. I've been to the ER and they're telling me they don't know what's wrong. Bull hockey. Bull hockey. They know exactly what's wrong. They do. Mm -hmm. um, so, okay, back to future predictions. There are many, many people who are about to start their own business. They are. You, there are so many people that are about to branch out on their own and have their own business. They are about to start their own economic system. There are certain areas in the U.S. and other countries that are going to. I don't know if this is a word. Please don't laugh at me. Maybe it's a new word. Maybe it's one of my words I invent. Regovern meaning they're going to start their own government and their own policies. They're going to kind of take this area and say, we as a people are going to be in this area and these are our rules. If you don't believe me, that's okay. Um, if you want to be part of it, pay attention. Pay attention and get on board with those people. And this is going to be in every single country where people just take parts of areas and say, we're regovernment. Again, I understand that might not be an actual word. If you look it up in the dictionary, it might not even mean the way I'm saying it. That's okay. That's not the important part of this. Um, answers are coming in and solutions are coming in. Do not... Do anything to your body you do not want to do. Hold off for as long as you can. We all have intuition. And if your intuitive abilities are telling you not to do this, hold off for as long as you can and um, do whatever you have to do. Again, you know, I've said since the very beginning, there's something else going on here in every single post, in every single, there's something else going on here. This is, the, I don't get me wrong. I believe C-19 is real. I believe people do get C-19. I also believe people get the flu and pneumonia. I also believe that people get sick for a number of different reasons. It's been proven there's a 99.6% survival rate with this C19. And so my question is to you, if, if, if that's the case, why the push? If that's the case, why the push? On a logical level, What's the push? Now there's a rumor, and I'm going to beg you all to research this on your own. There's a rumor, there's a contract between the pharmaceutical company and our government that if X number of shots are not given, the pharmaceutical company can literally take over certain government buildings and the military. If that, I don't know if that rumor is true. There's a contract. Supposedly there's a contract and it's public. Do your own research. Find out what's really going on here, folks. Why the push? 99.6% survival rate. Okay, I'm going to get into the show now. <clears throat> There are other predictions I was going to give, but that just kind of got really fast, really deep, really fast. And I just, I want to get into answering questions for everyone. I want to say hello to Absurd 
the Hierophant, Genevieve, I love you, girl, and um, Kay, hi, good afternoon. I'm going to go to the phone lines. If you want to call in and ask a question, the number is 845-277-9131. You can go ahead and call in. Now, I'm going to go here, and I'm going to say hello to 305. Uh, wait, 305. Hey, 305, how are you today? Um, you're talking to me, right? Am mm -hmm. I any person? Yep, you're yeah. 305. What's um, your name? Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Miami, 305. Nice. Brandon. My name is Brandon. Okay, how can I help you today? Um... I'm just, I'm a psychic. I work for, uh, you know, a psychic network. And I take calls. And I'm trying to increase my intuitive ability and also to heal myself. Okay. So the biggest, um, I, I'm sorry, go ahead. I struggle to heal every time. Like, I just, I just, I don't know. Okay, so here's what I'm going to say. It's been a long process, and it's been draining. It is. Um, and I, you know, I sometimes and I feel... I'm sorry to make this dark. You know, I didn't mean to do that, but... Yeah. Okay, so one of the Maybe things... You're great. I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay, so I'm going to answer your question about your psychic abilities. Um, and I'm going to put you on mute just so I can answer the question and get that information out to you because I think it's really important. Um, for people who have intuitive abilities and use them for work, sometimes it's challenging because the expectations that people have of us are like what they see on TV. Remember, TV is not real. It's really not. Like shows like uh, the medium, Teresa Caputo and uh, the ghost whisperer, um, that's TV. They're giving you this, like even the Teresa Caputo show, they shoot hours and hours and hours of footage to get that little boom oh, moment for the audience. I'm not saying she's not good. I believe she's very good, but it's not like that in real life. Us people who run around doing this for a living, I don't even know how else to state that. Um, each of us have different gifts and our gifts, our gifts, gifts, joy, joy. I have not, I don't think there's enough caffeine for this day. That's all I'm saying today. Oh, oy vey. Um, here's the thing. We, all of our gifts are very unique and every, here's the bigger thing. Each and every one of us that have entered this earth plane is a healer and an intuitive. Our soul came in to heal, first of all, ourselves and our journey. If there was nothing to heal, we would not be here. And second, to evolve, but and also to have our intuition as like a guiding light through the tunnel or whatever we want to call it that we're going through. So each and every one of us is intuitive and a healer. Where there is love, our gifts grow stronger. Where there is fear, our gifts dim. And shows like ghosts, whatever, that shall remain nameless at this moment, um, have brought a lot of fear, not fear, but fear into our gifts. Um, shows like the poltergeist and things like that have made us believe there's all this ominous stuff trying to get us. 
that's all that's all movies and and the truth of the matter is as long as you stay in your faith and you stay strong and you realize you know each and every one of us has angels that are with us from our first incarnation till our very last incarnation and each and every one of us is divinely protected beyond anything you could ever imagine as far as um our life in general and every day-to-day -day events. Have you ever, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you another Tony story. Um, people will tell you, Oh, your angels are there. Ask them for help. You have to ask them. And in some cases, yeah, you have to say, Hey, I want this. Get, help me with it. But in every case, they're there protecting us. Um, one year, many, many, many years ago, I had this, vehicle that I absolutely loved. It was a pearl white Audi and I just loved this vehicle. And it was, I was driving down the freeway and this guy, it was a holiday. So the freeway was jam packed and this guy's front tire locked my rear driver tire. His front passenger tire locked my rear driver tire as he did a lane change into my lane and my car spun and hit every side of the freeway wall. Now this is a holiday. The freeways were packed. It was summertime and they were packed. And as the car spun, as my gorgeous car <laughs> spun and hit every side of the freeway wall, I sat there like I was I didn't feel a thing. I didn't go side to side in the car. I didn't um, go forward and backward. I, I, and then my car just stopped and um, I got out and talked to the guy and traffic was backed up forever. My car did not restart. And that was the end of my Audi experience. However, the point is I didn't say angels come help me. They were just there helping as they always are. Now, you might say, but this happened to me and it was bad and that happened to me and it was bad. Yeah, there are going to be things that happen to us in this life that are challenging or that we look at our perception of these things are bad, but they're course corrections. My last near death, my last near death experience, which was my third, at least third near death experience, while I was going through it, I thought it was the worst thing that could have ever happened to me. And how could this happen? Because everything I loved was being replaced and I didn't know what was going to replace it. But it was a course correction to put me on this path, to put me in this seat. Now, I've been intuitive. I've been a channel um, my entire life. Things just blurb out of my mouth. I see things. I just knew things for as far back as I can remember. I shouldn't say my entire life because I really don't remember my childhood. Before the age of like 10, very little of my teenagers. The point being, I, my gifts never shut down. And some people shut their gifts down completely and then have to allow them to reopen. And nine times out of 10, they shut down due to fear. Because we hear something, see something, get an idea of something, we're told something, and we start shutting down our gifts. We can reopen them at any point we want to once we let go of the fear. The fear of being called crazy, the fear of this isn't real, the fear of something bad can enter. How do I? The biggest question I get, the biggest question I get is, how do you know it's not a devil? How do you know it's not a demon? Demons don't spread love. Duh. I mean, <laughs> right? Demons aren't out here trying to spread love to everybody and heal people. <laughs> and I don't believe in demons per se. I believe there's good energy and there's heavy energy. So as we go through this incarnation, this life, we have to realize each and every one of us has that innate ability, that 
ability that we are born with that says we are healers, we are intuitives. Even if we just use it on ourselves and our family, you're not obligated to use this gift, you, these gifts. You're not obligated to use them on anybody else. But if you are using them, if you are choosing to open them or open them further, do it from a space of faith. Do it from a space of love and purity and a, a place of knowing that these gifts only come from the divine. They only come from that which is good and means good for everyone involved. Okay. I hope that answered your question. I feel like if you just stay in that place of faith, you're going to do much better. And here's another thing that a lot of people believe. And again, my gifts have always been open. I never shut them down. So I don't know what it's like for gifts to be shut down and then reopen and what goes with that process. But what I can tell you is what you believe is what happens. So if you're believing that it's a big, hard, dark process, effing stop that. Effing get out of it. It's not. Gifts are of love and light. They're inside of you. You're just opening something up inside of you. It's like when you go through a relationship and it hurts your heart, so you shut your heart down a little bit. You become very vulnerable when you open up your heart again. It's the same thing. You're very vulnerable when you're opening up your light again, your gifts again. Um, stay in the light. Work with the light. Work with what's good. Don't believe all the doomsday, this is going to get you stuff. Don't. Just don't believe it. Because if the law of attraction is true and we create what we think, stop thinking crappy, crappy thoughts. I mean, I know that sounds so simplistic, but don't believe something big, bad, and ominous is out to get you that you can't even see. Believe that you are protected at all times because it's the one thing I know, like I know, like I know when I see people, I see angels around them. Amazingly, I don't see demons around them. I see angels around them. And the angels are fighting your thoughts. That's it. It's, believe it or not, it could actually be that simple. Believe it or not, it could actually be that you are just overcoming all the old things you were taught. Those old beliefs. Let all that go. Be in that space of faith. And if you do believe in the darkness, turn on a light. I mean, <laughs> I don't want to oversimplify things. But if you walk into a dark room, yeah, it can seem a little scary. Once you turn on a light, you're like, oh, yeah, it's fine in here. It's the same thing inside of you. If you're feeling like a darkness inside of you, turn on your own light. And I know it sounds so simple, but you are born in light. Everything about you is in light. So stay in that place of love, stay in that place of light and work from that space, okay? I'm going to go to the next caller. And the next caller is 860. Hey, 860, if you have me on speakerphone, please take me off. How are you doing today? How can I help you? What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, Tony. It's Amla. It's been so long. How are you? Oh, my goodness. I'm so good. How are you? Amla, it's been forever. I'm doing, I'm doing okay. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I'm so happy yes. to hear from you. Um, What's going on, Amla? I am too. I am too. I'm so glad to get to talk to you. Thank um, you. So I, yes, of course, of course. Um, so it's been a, you know, it's I know I'm not the only one, but I've it's been very um, a lot of highs, a lot of lows this year um, for me, and 
I, I I think the spirit is just really helping me, enabling me to feel empowered and feel grounded, feel secure even more than ever um, due to my experiences. So I feel so good about myself. I was just wondering if you see a quality partner coming in mm. for me yes. or when that might happen. Yes. Okay. So Amla, I know uh, some time ago we talked about a, in the past, we talked about a partner too, and that person did come in. And you know, not everybody's our forever partner. People come in and we have experiences yeah. with them and it helps get us ready for our next partner. Um, I'm going to tell you in a month and a half, depending on a few things, in a month and a half, okay. you have the potential to meet somebody yeah. brand spanking new. Boom, boom. Brand spanking new. Okay. This person is going to come in awesome. like a um, like a thunderbolt. Like uh, almost, I don't want to say larger than life, but like you feel like a thunderbolt inside of you. Like when you see or meet yeah. this person. Now I'm going to tell you, it's uh -huh. going to be really difficult for you to be calm, cool, and reserved when we feel that thunderbolt inside of us, <laughs> right? But you have to be <laughs> calm, cool, yeah. and reserved. You have to be in that space where you are being like, hey, what's up? How are you? Not like, yeah. oh my God, yeah. you're the one. <laughs> um, yeah. I am going to tell yeah. you that in about a month and a half, this person is coming in. You've not met this person before. I feel like this person is grounded. They're a little earthy. And yeah. they're going to um, be very understanding of of just of life in general this person has had a lot of losses in their life um but they don't carry okay. it like a wounded bird they just it just gave them right. a greater perspective and understanding of life it also helped them to be in that space where they uh, have a different perspective on what a relationship and love should be and how they should treat people, which is a beautiful place to be. Sure. Um, I do feel yeah. like this person, when they come in, you might feel like they're not ready. Something they say or do gives you the impression that they're not ready for a full-on okay. relationship. You know what? That's okay. Even if they're not ready... Friends before favors is okay, okay? Yeah. Um, but this yeah. person actually mm -hmm. is ready for a full-on, fully committed relationship. And this person also is, is really liking you. So you have to have a lot of self-confidence. They're just the type of person, they're like a, a chess player. You're not going to see their moves coming. Like you're not going to know. Okay. Th like they, they know where they're going and what they want and how they plan to get there. They're just not going to tell you the ending of the story. They're going to, they're going to go slowly okay. and they're not going to say, I want to, you know what? I want to spend the, you're the person I want to spend the rest because they've been through life. They understand things happen. So they're going to take it slowly and they're going to go in that pace that needs to be gone in. I hope that makes sense to you. Right. Liz. I want to thank everybody for joining me today. I'm so grateful. I will be back later this week with another show. Until then, have an amazing rest of the week.